The first name that always springs to mind when I think of games of a board game is Monopoly. The Parker Brothers classic is the single most famous rainy day favourite that has ignited feuds worldwide between friend and family alike. What better way to enact suffering on a loved one than to force them into crippling debt and insolvency? Of course, you wouldn't want to do this to people you supposedly care about in the real world, so embrace the evils of capitalism in a way that won't wind you up in debtor's prison should it all go horribly wrong. Choose from between two to four players first off. Typically, the more players, the tougher but more entertaining the game is, as the competition is hotter. I always go for four. You then proceed to pick whether each player is human or CPU. You can watch a fully computerized game or play as four characters yourself if you so desire. You choose from the usual selection of pieces, the dog, the car, the thimble, all those. You don't have to, but it is possible to play using two Game Boys if you have two cartridges and a cable, and this makes multiplayer easier, for reasons I'll explain in a moment. As I always bring up with board game games, the most important thing to get right is to program a suitable AI. Whoever was responsible for this part of the coding needs to be lauded as the AI overlord or something, because it is perfect. You can choose from eight different CPU opponents from a top and bottom four. Basically, the bottom four are cautious and kind of pushovers when it comes to trading. The top four are more ruthless and, well, heartless. Monopoly is a world-renowned board game with so many variations, from The Simpsons to Star Wars, but of course what we have here is the traditional streets. The layout you have depends on which cartridge you own. The USA version has the original Atlantic City street names, whereas if you get the European version, you can choose between London, Paris or Berlin, depending on your language choice when the game loads up. I think every family has slightly different rules to how they play this game. I seem to remember that we banned buying properties on the first lap of the board, but that's certainly not the rule in the Game Boy game, as you can buy places immediately. In fact, you're obliged to. In a weird twist to the rules that I certainly don't remember, if a player lands on a vacant property, they either have to buy it at cost price or initiate an auction, whereby the highest bidder takes the deeds. There's no option to pass over it, leading to some players being priced out if they've spent all their money already. If a player can't afford to buy it outright, you can often win it for less at auction. A really good way to get some cheap real estate. As far as I can tell, the rules are the same other than that. You have a detailed menu that can be accessed before any throw of the dice, doesn't have to be your own turn, in which you can trade or barter properties, buy houses and hotels, or mortgage your portfolio in order to scrape some money together. The trade menu is a lot of fun, and it's here in particular where the AI shines. You can choose the initial terms on both sides, how much money to exchange, and or what properties are going to be up for bargaining. There are several ways to achieve what you want, but your rate of success and the cost to you depends on the ruthlessness of the CPU characters you've chosen. The bottom four are flaky and will bend over to your whims much sooner than the top four, who really bust your balls at times. So, say you have two properties in a band and one of the other players buys the third one, you know, just to be a jackass. Entering the trade screen will let you select the property you want and what terms of your own you want to put up. You could offer a trade of some other property. It's a good idea to have a look at their portfolio to see if you have something of interest. The AI really takes into account what benefits them and what doesn't. It's that clever. You could put some cash down for it. Be prepared to pay exorbitantly, of course. They have what you want and they know this. Or you can even leave your terms blank and let the opponent choose. Sometimes they'll come back at you with a counter offer and you can barter back and forth to hash out terms. Other times they'll just press no, which means you're going to have to offer a ridiculous amount to get anything out of them. It can be real stingy buggers sometimes, especially if you're trying to complete a whole band of properties. I'm talking about this as though bartering with a computer player, because that's how I always play the game. It's possible to play up to four human characters if you have that many friends. I don't. And the same system applies. This brings me back to the point I made earlier. You can play multiplayer using the same Game Boy and just pass it around, but the trading and auction sequences become kind of awkward if you do that. The auction ones in particular, it's done in a going, going, gone manner that's timed, and the bids are called out by moving a cursor to the player's name. 
This is obviously not easy when four humans are looking at one little screen. I suppose the easiest way would be to designate a banker for the whole game who controls everything, like you do when playing the board game. If there are only two of you, the link cable option removes any such difficulty, so this is recommended. I adore the graphics. All of the pieces have little movement animations, and the giant Capitol Hill creature eating your money when you have to pay a fine or rent is a Marxist's nightmare. There's no music in-game save for a few jingles, you get dice rolling noises and a few other things, but it's largely a quiet game. You'll gravitate to the main game most of the time, but there's actually an option to load a prepared game. This gives you a handful of scenarios to start the game with. For instance, The Big Boys gives players random full bands of properties spread out between them, so that all streets are already sold. Trader's Delight does the same thing, except this time you don't have complete bands and have to swap with each other from the get-go. Building shortage is frightening. All the houses and hotels are pre-allocated to people, meaning this game ain't going on for too long. There are four or five others as well, and all give added dimensions to your gameplay. This must be the best board game game on the Game Boy. That's a lot of game. Certainly none spring to mind that are better than it. I really love it. The only thing that could improve this game? It'd be nice to see the colours that we all associate with the groups of streets. Well, you know what? There was a version on Game Boy Colour that let us do just that. Thanks so much for watching this video. The Kickstarter for the book is now live. Check the link in the description for how you can back the project and be the first to get your hands on the Portable Power Encyclopedia, featuring more than 900 Game Boy game reviews and a whole wealth of useful information on the world's favorite handheld console. See you later on.